Hi, today we're going to read Wipeout of the Wireless Weenies. This is a series of short stories. So we're going to read just one story at a time. That way it makes sense. So this first story is called After the Apocalypse. All right. Zombies! Dad screamed, pointing out the living room window. Where? Fear and curiosity fought a short battle in my brain. Curiosity won. I rushed over to see for myself. No, it's too gruesome, Dad said as he snatched me off my feet and tossed me over my shoulder over his shoulders and ran toward the basement door. I'm almost twelve, but I'm pretty skinny. Mom grabbed my twin brother, Eli, and hurried down the stairs right behind us. Eli's also skinny, and Mom's pretty strong. Into the shelter, Dad said. You know the drill. We sure did. Mom and Dad had us practice our zombie apocalypse drill once a week. Whatever we're doing, when Dad screams, zombies, we had to drop everything and run to the shelter. I guess it's not a drill this time, Eli said as Dad bolted the steel door that would keep us safe from the throngs of the walking dead. Guess not. They never do two drills in one week. And we had one three days ago. This must be the real thing, I sighed and sat down on the couch. The shelter was comfortable enough. There was plenty of food and a small toilet in a separate room. We had beds and chairs, but it was kind of boring. I liked to go outside and play with my friends, especially now that school was out for the summer. And I had a birthday coming up in less than a week. So did Eli, of course, since we're twins. A zombie apocalypse would ruin everything. Dad turned on the radio, but all we got was static. It looked like we wouldn't be able to find out what was happening. I grabbed a book and settled down. When I got tired of reading, I unfolded my cot and went to sleep. The next morning, after breakfast, Dad said, I'm going to go take a look outside. He grabbed an axe from its peg on the wall and headed for the door. Be careful, Mom said. She unbolted the door, then locked everything up again as soon as Dad stepped out. She waited right there with, his hand, with her hand on the bolt, ready to let him back in as soon as he shouted the password. Dad was only gone for about ten minutes. Then he came back, pounding on the door and shouted, Off with their heads! That must be the password. He was panting like he'd been running. I spotted something splattered across his shirt. It looked like brains, though. I, though I didn't really want to get close enough to find out for sure. I noticed the head of the axe was coated with slimy clots too. Is it bad out there? Mom asked. It's not good. We'd better stay here until things calm down, Dad said. According to everything I've read, they'll start to fall apart eventually. They're rotting. We just have to wait them out. We checked outside every, he checked outside every morning. Each time he was gone a bit longer. I lost track of the date, but at some point Mom pulled a cake from the freezer and stuck candles on it. Happy birthday, boys! I put this here just in case, she said. She pulled a small pile of presents from under her bed. So Eli and I celebrated our birthday in our zombie shelter. The next day, after Dad went out to check, he came back, hung the axe on his peg, and said, Good news! It's over! They're all gone, Mom asked. All gone, Dad said, and the government troops removed the bodies. Yay! We can go outside, I shouted. I raced for the door. Wait! Dad grabbed me and Eli by the shoulder. Remember, this was a terrible experience for all the survivors. If you see the neighbors, they might not want to talk about it, okay? Sure, I threw the bolt and flung open the door. Eli followed me through the house and out the front yard. I hope none of our friends got killed, I said. They didn't, he said. How do you know? Think about it, he said. Think about what? Remember when we turned eight, he asked. Sure, we had that huge party with the magician and the ice cream cones. It was awesome. I could still taste the hot fudge. I even licked some off the couch after it got spilled there. Ew. Right, it was awesome. But it was kind of a mess too, Eli said. And remember when we turned nine? Yeah, dad took a bunch of us bowling. That was definitely memorable. Dad threw his back out and my friends got so rowdy we were banned from the bowling alley for a life. Then, Eli threw up in the car. I guess he shouldn't have eaten five hot dogs. Neither should I, but at least I didn't puke until we got back home. I glanced at the couch. The puke stain wasn't nearly as bad as the fudge stain. What about when we turned 10, Eli asked. We didn't have a party, remember? 
There was an alien invasion. As the words left my mouth, I realized how crazy they sounded. Alien invasion? Almost as crazy as last year when we missed our party because of the killer solar flare. Both times, Dad had suggested the neighbors wouldn't want to relive their experiences, so we never talked about it. Eli, I said. What? There aren't any zombies, are there? I'm pretty sure that's the case, he said. I thought about the cake. It was hard to believe Mom had just happened to think of putting one down there. There'd been a cake and presents down there last year, and the year before, too. So our parents would rather hide in the basement for a week than throw another birthday party for us? Seems that way. What about this stuff on the axe, I asked. Blueberry pudding, Eli said. I tasted it. I thought about all of that. Alien invasion, solar flare, zombie apocalypse. What do you think it'll be next year? I don't know, he said, but I do know one thing. We need to get a video game system down there before then. Yeah, but no zombie games, I said. I've definitely had enough zombies for a while. I grabbed our basketball and headed toward the playground with Eli. As I walked down the street in the fresh air and sunshine, I realized that one thing I'd never liked about being a twin actually turned out to be an advantage. It could be worse, I said. What do you mean, Eli, sa Eli asked. Imagine what would happen if we didn't share a birthday, I said. We'd get stuck in the shelter twice a year. I threw him a bounce back and promised myself that if I ever had kids, they could throw as many parties as they wanted, no matter how messy they got. And that is the end of After the Apocalypse. I hope you enjoyed it.